Hi, Douglas Simonson here coming to you from Mexico with another time-lapse video where I create a painting from start to finish. I want to warn you today I'm doing a male nude, so if that's not something you want to see, stop this video now. Okay? You've been warned. Today I'm going to be working from a photograph of Israel, one of my models from Brazil. This is a photo from a photo shoot in Bahia, which I did a few years ago, with Israel and Wellington. And if you want to know more about that photo shoot, you can check out my two ebooks, Bahian Adventure 1 and 2, available on my website in the ebooks section. For this painting, I'm going to be working from a photograph of Israel, and this is the photo. This video is going to be very similar to most of my demonstration videos, except there's something extra with this one. You're actually going to get to see me choose and mix the colors that I use in the painting. That's actually a big chunk of this video, so if you don't want to see all the color mixing, you can skip that and just go to the time-lapse video. And as usual, the time-lapse shows the whole several-hour process of the painting compressed into a couple of minutes. So, let's go into the studio and see how I create this painting. Okay, I'm about to start this painting, and I have already drawn with pencil uh, a rough outline of the image under the canvas. What I'm going to do now is put on my usual purple brownish wash with a big wide brush. And this is a wash which means it's, uh, it's, it's watered down. It's supposed to be kind of thin so that, so that I can see the, uh, the pencil marks even after I've painted this on top of it. When you're doing this, when you're painting, uh, when you're putting on the wash like this, you might not think it's important what kind of brush strokes you're using, but the truth is the more energy you have when you're doing this, and the less careful you are, the more it's going to give you're painting a really good beginning. The more energy your painting has in the beginning, the better. Because it's not something you can put in later. I'm all about lots of energy in my paintings. Sometimes I am more successful about it than others. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry now, and while it dries, I'm going to start mixing my colors. Okay, so this is the reference photograph I'm going to be using. I'm going to be looking at this while I'm mixing my colors and uh, trying to match my basic colors to the basic colors I see here. So first, I'm going to put out my standard my standard palette, which is ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, which is a, a cool red. I'm almost out of this. And yellow oxide, also known as yellow ochre, which is a very useful earth yellow. And I also use a lot of burnt sienna, which is a really warm brown. And, of course, white. That's titanium white. And I also like to have a uh, a warm red, as opposed to my alizarin being a cool red, uh, cadmium red light in this case, and a more intense yellow. To go along with my yellow ochre, I have a cadmium yellow medium, which is a much brighter yellow. And then 
what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, I'm going to mix some really dark flesh tones for these darkest areas on the body. So the way I mix a dark flesh tone is basically it's a, it's a kind of purple. So I use ultramarine blue and uh, alizarin crimson in about equal amounts and then I'll add a little yellow oxide to make it less purple because it's a shadow color and I don't want it to be too vivid. So now I have a really nice dark flesh tone. So I'll put that over there. And since I'm using a disposable palette, I want to be able to use it, this area, to mix a lot of different colors. So every time I mix, I take a piece of tissue paper, Kleenex, and water and just scrub it away so I'm ready to mix the next color. And the next color I'm going to mix is going to be a medium brown for the body medium dark brown and for that I'll use it's a it's a warm brown so I'm going to use a warm brown burnt sienna and I'm going to add a little blue and a little alizarin to that and a little white now here's something I of, I often do too this is a, this is also this is actually a matte medium let me show you what it comes from this is, this is the original container. And what this does is it makes your paint sloppier and looser and it keeps it wet longer because if you use acrylics a lot, you know they dry out really fast. And putting some medium in, some matte medium, it doesn't change the color, but it does keep it wet longer. And if you're, you've got some paint that's almost dry from the day before, you can add some medium to it and quite often bring it back to life. Now this light is weird, so I have to check this. And it needs a little more red, maybe a little orange. Orange is not, not really orange, it's cadmium red, but it's very close to orange. So now I have, see the thing that happens sometimes when you add titanium white is things get chalky, and that's what happened with this, so I had to warm it back up again. So now I have a medium tone that looks pretty good. Next I'll mix some of this sand. That's really easy. I'll use, uh, what I usually use for sand is just raw sienna, which I haven't, haven't squeezed out yet. Raw sienna is kind of like uh, yellow ochre, just darker and earthier and more brown. So if I just add some white to that, I get a nice sand, beach sand kind of color, which is really handy. Quite a bit of white, not so much raw sienna. And some medium. Now, I'm going to mix up more of this later, but this will get me started. And then I'll mix up some sky color. Ultramarine blue is a nice all-purpose blue, but it's really cool. And uh, it becomes a lot more interesting when you add a little bit of phthalo blue to it. And I keep phthalo blue around just so that I have uh, I can add it to ultramarine to make a sky a little more, I don't know, I just like the color more lively, more vivid, more beautiful. So now I'm adding a little bit of phthalo to this, ult this uh, ultramarine and some white, and then we get a really gorgeous blue. So if you look at this photograph, you'll see that the blue is darker up here and then lighter here and then you can't tell it from here but usually it gets really light at the horizon. So I'm going to use this darker version for the top and then I'll mix some more white into this to make a lighter version for the middle part of the sky and the lower part. 
Now there's a whole bunch more white and some medium. Another color I'm going to need is black. And you can buy black in a tube, but what I prefer is using some ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. That makes a really nice black and it's just more interesting than uh, a black out of the tube. Where is my burnt umber? There it is. So here's my burnt umber, which burnt umber is just a, is, is a brown, but it's a cool, dark brown, as opposed to uh, burnt sienna, which is a, a lighter, warm brown. Okay, so here I'm mixing my ultramarine blue and my burnt umber to get black. Now let's see what else I need to get started. To get started, I just need, I think, a, uh, a really light, uh, well, a much lighter flesh tone, like, like this. And a lighter flesh tone is a really good thing to know, a standard that I use. I mean, it's a really good, uh, it's a really common thing that you need to mix. So I use alizarin crimson. Get a little more out of this tube. And ultramarine blue and yellow oxide. Actually, that makes a nice darker flesh tone. If I add a little cadmium to it, it warms it up a lot. And then I have a really nice, useful flesh tone, but this turns out a little darker than I wanted it to, so I'm going to start again with yellow oxide and just a touch of alizarin and cadmium, and then I'm going to add some white. And this will give me a better, a better color uh, and value for the parts of the flesh that are in the light, where the brightest light is hitting them. So you can see here, see the difference between this and this and this. I mean, this is much lighter. And with this now, these colors, I have the basics so that I can start painting. This is far from what I'm going to end up with. I'm going to need a lot more variations on, on colors and some other colors I haven't even mixed yet. But for the big areas, that's all I need to start with. Because you don't want to mix all your colors ahead of time anyway, because once you get those colors on there, you don't know how they're going to behave. And uh, you will have a lot more luck if you get the colors on there before you start mixing the other things that are going to go next to them.
So here is the finished painting. I call it Israel with Gatorade. It's now showing on my website, so you can go see it there at douglassimonson.com. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you got inspired. And if you did, go get out your paints and brushes and go paint.